Are you ready to redefine what it means to thrive at any age? Welcome to Age is Just a Number with BJ and Ruth. In your 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond, you deserve to live your best life. Say goodbye to preconceived notions and let's shatter those stereotypes together. Get ready to own your vitality because age, well, that's just a number. Hey everybody, it's BJ and Ruth and we're back talking about health and fitness and just want to thank you for joining us and uh, you know we're on this journey together about being healthy and growing uh, old gracefully. I think we've said that repeatedly. Yes, I right? love that word. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, That's what it's all about. Yeah, we understand that aging is inevitable. However, uh, we believe that getting old is optional. It is. Well, yeah. Like, right? I'm all about quality. Yeah. You don't have to compromise your quality of life just because you're getting older. Yeah, 100%. So, so I want to thank you for joining us. If you're watching us for the first time, please take a minute and subscribe to the channel. Like the video. That helps us out. And we are putting out regular content, so you don't want to miss anything. So today, we are going to talk about seven mistakes that people make in their 40s, 50s, and 60s when it comes to building muscle. People make mistakes? Yeah, they <laughs> should. Yeah, they do indeed, right? Um, and Except we don't. Right. <laughs> we like to think we don't. Yeah, right. Um, but a lot of times, now you might be saying, I'm just starting this fitness journey, I'm in my 40s. Um, you know, we're going to have some, uh, here's another thing, we, um, we, we've done some episodes with, uh, with Matt, Coach Matt, who does my uh, coaching. He's an online coach. He does training programs, things like that. And Matt's going to be on with us soon. Um, I just want to put it out there. If you have specific questions that you would like us to talk about with Matt, um, please put it in the comments and we'll take note of all of those. And when we have Matt on in the episode, we'll <clears throat> spend some time going over any questions that you might have for him. And like I said, he's um, he's a nutritionist, he can handle training and not just weight training, but also the whole area about functional training and um, stretching and mobility, all of those things. And we're going to, you know, the last time we had him on, we talked about some mental health things. I think we'll probably address those as well because yeah. for him it was very personal because he, um, he had some mental health issues that he had to deal with and it was his training that was such a big part of him getting out of it because he's coming out of the military. such a positive uh, influence on yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. so he's really coming out of, the, out of the military on that. So, you know, there were some things to work through and whatnot. So anyway, that's coming up. So if you have some things that you think would you'd like to know about or would specifically like us to address with him, put it in the comments and we'll take note of all of those for when we have him on. So now getting back to where we're at, mistakes that you're prone to make in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, and whether you're starting training right now or you're 10 years in and you're just rolling into your 40s and 50s or whatever the age might be, these will all apply, okay? And so let's, uh, let's get going. Number one, and this one is, I think for all of us is a good one, um, is we don't warm up, yes. right? So we just, here's the thing, <laughs> you know, when I was 20, I could, I Walk could do, into the gym cold and yeah, just go. I, <laughs> I do a warm up, like a, if I'm, whatever I'm doing, bench or, or, or squats, let's pick the two biggest exercises yeah. or deadlift. I just walk in, warm up with the bar and then start. Yeah. Right. Instead of that, maybe, you know, yeah. doing some abs or doing some stretching or right. warming the bot, the entire body up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So here's the thing. As we get older, our joints, ligaments, tendons uh, don't like going from cold, from zero to gold. To 10. Yeah. Right? To <laughs> they on. don't like it. <laughs> right. So there's a couple of parts to warming up that's super important for injury prevention and also for just the longevity of your training at the gym because nobody likes leaving the gym. I'll tell you something, I used to um, train legs on Saturdays and I would go in and train legs so hard and do squats so heavy that my knees would hurt until the following Thursday, finally start feeling better on Friday and then I'd go do it again on Saturday. And you know, generally out of all of that, I might've enjoyed that workout but I sure didn't enjoy the rest of the week hobbling around. No, and no. And right? 
So we, 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 I say that to say, take care of your ligaments and your joints. And as you get older, it's, it's, it's not, I find me personally today at almost 55, that my body needs more time to recover. So, you know, I'm more mindful of, of what its boundaries are and, and honoring that. Yeah. So when we talk about warming up, what do we mean? Well, there's warming up the whole body. So you can do that with whether it's on a treadmill, whether it's uh, you know, light skipping or yeah. on the bike or whatever, some kind of overall cardiovascular work, maybe about like five minutes. Five, 10 minutes. Yeah, and yeah. here's the thing, when it comes to warm-ups, the warm-up is not the workout. No. So you don't want to do cardio so hard that you're gassed at the, end of, <laughs> no. at the end of your warm-up. It's to warm you up, it's to right? go from that cold, feeling of to just warm yeah pleasantly warm right and then part two is you need to do some warm-up that's specific to the muscle group that you're about to work and the exercise that you're about to do yeah. so for example if you're getting ready to do bench or well any exercise but let's use bench um, if we're getting ready to do bench uh, generally speaking you want to warm up somewhere in the neighborhood of two to four uh two to four sets and that doesn't mean sets of like 18 reps with a weight that you're gassed at the end of it's just the warm-up maybe you're going to do six or eight with the bar then maybe you're going to you yeah. know do another six or eight with a lighter weight and then like maybe I, something with 10 or, and if i'm doing legs and i'm doing my heavy squats i'll always do my warm-up sets with just the bar yeah no no plates on the bar just the bar yeah and you figure out what that yeah. weight is for you whether you're going to how much weight you're going to use yeah but uh, the point is to do the warm-up not just get in there and go no. Right? right? And to make sure that the whole body's warmed up and then make sure the muscle group that you're dealing with is warmed up. And one of the reasons we warm up with the exercise specifically is because we also want to warm up the joints that are going to get engaged in that exercise. Yeah. So with your squats, there's your knees, there's uh, obviously hip flexors, all these things, right? With your, uh, with your shoulders, same ligaments and so yeah. forth. And um, because for me, I, I, I'm very careful when it comes to my shoulders. Yep. So. Um, so just, just, you know, make that a priority, especially whether you're starting, because it's going to help you a lot as, as a, as a new returnee or new coming newly to the gym. It's just going to help you to feel better during, be more effective during and feel better after your workout. Yeah. Right. That's the whole point of this exercise, right? Is we want to go and feel better as a result of the training. And yeah. The so use the warm up to prevent injury. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number two uh, is not working towards increasing strength responsibly. I, I emphasize the word <laughs> responsibly. responsibly. With okay? age comes wisdom, so let's right? use it. <laughs> right? So what do we mean by responsibly? Well, we're talking about maintaining good form. Yes. We're talking about maintaining control. Yes. Right? It's not about using swing and <clears throat> momentum to move the weight. Yeah. It's about staying still. S Holding yeah. your body in proper form and yeah. you use the muscles to lift the weight. Yeah. And, and stability, right? Yeah. Maintaining stability. Uh, the other one is the, the speed of your reps. Now, you may do something faster or slower, but you need to know what you're doing when you do that. Yeah. Right? Uh, I went with somebody uh, one time to the gym and, I, I, and it was one of his first times. And so I was just going through some workouts with him and stuff and he was showing me what he was already doing. And uh, one thing I said to him is, remember, it's weight lifting. It's not weight throwing. Not weight throwing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so we want to just, and, and then on, with all of that in mind, we want to get um, progressive resistance. So that means we're, we want to get stronger at the gym. Yeah. We want to responsibly lift heavier weights. That's right. Right. And, and we often think of, I always think about it as uh, the phrase time under tension. So it's not about how fast you go. It's, it's about how effective you are. Yeah. Hundred so percent. Sometimes it's it's taking the same weight, the same rep, slow it down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So number three muscle building mistake is forgetting about the mind and muscle connection. Always, always. That one's huge. Right? Are you just are you doing bicep curls and going through the motions, or are you actually taking the taking a, a moment yeah. to connect the mind yeah. to the bicep? Yeah. Uh, think of the muscle fibers engaging. 
And then like I, I used to tell my, my training clients, I can have no weight. And if I, my mind is engaged, yes. it's so different yeah. than if I'm just going through the motions. 100%. Yeah. And that means you might end up using a lighter weight. Yeah. But the point is not to go in and show off when we go to the gym. <laughs> Right? Right. Look at and, how much weight I can lift. And we often say, leave the ego at the door. Right? The point is to do what, what is going to cause your body to respond. What is most effective for you for, for, you for that workout. Yeah. yeah. And the whole point of moving the muscle, you're going to engage more muscle fibers by putting your, your mind into what you're doing and connecting and really focusing on the muscle contraction and, yeah. and feeling sure. it. Sure. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, number three. Number four is overlooking metabolic training. Now you might be thinking, what is meta metabolic training? Really what metabolic training talks about is, and this is another one that's really good for the joints because yeah. we're going to back off on the amount of weight, but we're going to increase the reps that we're going to do. Yeah. And as you know, maybe there's an exercise like, let's use bench press again as an example, that you might go heavier on. Right. And uh, you'll find as you get older, maybe it's not so great on your shoulders. Right. Um, or if it's bent, uh, pardon me, if it's um, squats, maybe it's not so good on your knees. So what we're going to do is back off the weight. And add more reps. Yeah. And the idea being is we don't want to train to the burn. We want to train through the burn. Yes, past the burn. Right. So I... I, I my trainer, when I first started at, at 40, he used to always say to me, okay, when you're at the end and you feel like you couldn't squeeze it one more and you're feeling that burn, three more. Sure. Right there, three more. Yeah. Go, go into that zone. Right. Yeah. And what that will do is it takes your intensity, training intensity up, right? Yeah. But it also saves your joints. I put my hand on my knees because that's what took the most pounding <laughs> over the years for me. Um, but it, 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 it eases off on your joints same thing so you can be in the gym longer stronger and healthier yeah. and and overall your body's going to uh, respond better as a result okay so all right uh number five this one's an interesting one um not training like an athlete mm -hmm. so a couple things on this one and for me the the number one thing i thought about as i was researching this is athletes have a plan mm -hmm. right they're not showing up to the gym and just hoping that when they walk out, they've had a good training session. And we've or, all seen it. That person who sits down on the bench and they spend more time on their phone texting than they actually do working out or they, sure. you know, the, whereas the, the, the athlete that's in there, you have a plan. You go in there, you know what you want to do, you get it done. Um, and often these are the people who don't have their phones with them. Because yeah. they're or it's an overall, you know, they have an overall plan. So let's, let's say uh, somebody is a, a hockey player. They have a certain amount of training that they're doing on a regular basis. Let's say it's off-season training. Yeah. So that will facilitate their on-ice performance. So there's going to be some on-ice training. There's going to be some off-ice training. Yeah. But they do it all on purpose. And it's all done with an intent and a plan to get somewhere. That's right. So uh, number one is making sure that you um, that you have a plan and then the other thing is uh, incorporating athletic work so that would be like we talked about uh, type 2 muscle fiber training so it'll be some along those lines like um, box jumps right nobody right. likes them but I, they're really <laughs> I really like them you I've, like them I've, I don't like I've them. <laughs> reincorporated yeah I've reincorporated box jumps into my training so yeah. every um, every Saturday for leg day I uh, I do um, I do box jumps at the end of my leg workout. Okay. So, uh, but something like that. Again, we want to um, engage athletic movement because we want to make sure it's, it's simple. Use it or lose it. Yeah. Right. I think we've we've said that before. We but it's, we have. <laughs> but it's, it's very appropriate. Okay. Uh, number six is doing the wrong kind of cardio. Yes. So r rule of thumb: as you age, we've talked about joints a lot. If if you're still, if you're running and it feels good, that's fine. But you're going to find out over the years as you're um, running and running and running, it's going to take a toll on your joints. So Definitely. maybe the right yeah. kind of cardio is maybe you want to incorporate some, you know, some bike or maybe change it up. And the and the body will get used to whatever it is you're you're doing. So if you do the same thing over and over and over again, it becomes yeah. less effective. So uh, you know to to get. To break through that plateau, change it up. 
Yeah. yeah. Or maybe it's elliptical work. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, whatever else it might be. Uh, there's all sorts of options, right? So, um, okay. And number seven, last one is um, thinking that nutrition is pretty important. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's not pretty important. It is very important. Yeah, it's extremely important. It's extremely important. important. So, um, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a hundred percent diet and a hundred or nutrition plan and a hundred percent training. Yeah. So we've said this repeatedly. You, you can't cannot out train a, a bad, bad diet. diet. You can't. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So as you and and it's going to become more prevalent as you get older. Yeah. Right. Because things are happening in your body, your hormones, your metabolism, all of these things. So where you could uh, eat a pizza and go to bed and wake up and everything be fine, not so much. And right. I find now with me as a woman going through menopause, it's, I, my hormones are, are different. I eat less. I don't have to eat as much. And so I'm really mindful of making sure food is fuel. So I want the good quality nutrients yeah. to go into my gas tank. Yeah. And, yeah. and we've spent some time talking about quality nutrition. So we're not yeah. going to go through a lot of that here. But you can check back in the videos. It'll, it'll be there as well. So, uh, but those are seven things that as we age, as we are heading into our 40s and 50s and 60s, that uh, you know, to take a look at and say, hey, um, I can't do these things the way I used to, or I'm starting out in my 40s. If you do these things now, it'll help you in the long run um, with making right decisions up front. So yeah. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today. If you haven't, please uh, take a sec and um, subscribe to the channel like the video it helps us again getting the word out there and as we said we are going to have uh, an episode coming up or some episodes coming up again with uh, with Matt and we you can go back and find him in previous ones where we did coaching sessions with him so if you have questions that you would like to direct to him whether they're nutrition coach or pardon me nutrition questions or training questions or maybe there are some flexibility questions anything like that um, certainly put it in the comments and we will do our best to get to all of them. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. See ya. See ya.